please welcome Executive Director of the White House Office of Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships, Melissa Rogers. Hello everyone, good to see you and good to be with you today. I'd like to thank my friend uh, Katrina Lantos for the kind invitation to join you and for her leadership on these issues. The Lantos family certainly has a very proud human rights record. And I'd also like to thank Ambassadors Brownback and Saperstein for their commitment to religious freedom for everyone and for what they have done to make this gathering, both in years past and today, so strong and so promising. And thanks as well to all of you gathered here today and for your work to promote religious freedom for everyone everywhere. I'm really pleased to bring you greetings this morning from President Biden. When we last gathered, I noted that the President looked forward to nominating a highly qualified ambassador at large for international religious freedom in the coming weeks. And as you know, President Biden swiftly nominated a leader with great experience, talent, and dedication to serve in that office. And we were so pleased to see that the United States Senate confirmed Ambassador Rashad Hussein by an overwhelming bipartisan vote. Ambassador Hussein is doing a spectacular job, and I'm so pleased to work with him and his talented staff in the um, Office of International Religious Freedom at the State Department. Ambassador Hussein gave you an update on some of the work we're doing to promote the right of religious freedom abroad, and I'd like to offer a few updates on what we're doing at home to promote this precious right. After all, just as we urge others to make strides to uh, promote religious freedom, we want to make strides ourselves here at home. First, the administration continues to uphold a foundational right that's in our Constitution. Government should never favor one faith or a religion over another, and it should not discriminate against any particular faith. Moreover, the administration is committed to promoting diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility, often called DEIA for shorthand, on the basis of religious identity and practice as well as on other grounds. Last summer, President Biden signed an executive order promoting DEIA, including on the basis of religion, race, sexual orientation, gender identity, and disability, among other grounds in the federal workforce. And as the nation's largest employer, the federal government has to be a model where all employees are treated with respect and dignity. As President Biden often says, the federal government's workforce should reflect the diversity of the American people. A growing body of evidence demonstrates that diversity, equi equitable uh, arrangements, inclusivity, and accessibility in our workplaces yields higher performing organizations. And not only the right thing to do, it is the smart thing to do. And we continue to implement this order across government. The President's commitment to these issues is also reflected in the fact of his nomination of the first Muslim to serve as ambassador at large for international religious freedom. His nomination of Professor Deborah Lipstadt, a renowned scholar of the Holocaust and anti-Semitism, to serve as special envoy to monitor and combat anti-Semitism with the rank of ambassador. And his appointment, of course, of diverse and high qual highly qualified people to serve on the United States Commission for International Religious Freedom. Likewise, the Biden-Harris administration has thrown its doors open widely to people of all faiths and beliefs for public policy meetings, and of all, certainly to people of all backgrounds as well. And we have recognized a wide range of religious holidays, including holidays celebrated by the Buddhist, Christian, Hindu, Jain, Jewish, Muslim, and Sikh traditions. Indeed, this year, the White House hosted a special Hanukkah celebration with the participation of the first Jewish spouse, of a Vice President of the United States. We were very proud about that. And Vice President Kamala Harris and Second Gentleman Doug, uh, Doug Imhoff affixed a mezuzah to, for the first time at the front door of the Vice President's residence at the Naval Observatory. In addition, the White House and the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services held the first naturalization ceremony in honor of National Religious Freedom Day, recognizing that people of diverse faiths and beliefs have done so much to strengthen our country and contribute to our society. 
Well, we also um, have been a, a leader and, and expect to continue to be a leader as we promote uh, religion, the resettlement of people all across the country into our country uh, who are fleeing persecution in their own places and lands. And we continue to try to do that work uh, very strongly. And of course, we cannot ever do this work alone. This is work that we do very closely with civil society. We are doing everything that we can to ensure that we welcome uh, refugees to our country and that we build our own system of refugee resettlement, which we're working very hard to do. And we want to make sure that we are also addressing the root causes that often push people out of our, their own countries where they would ideally like to stay. So that work continues and we look forward to working with you um, and religious and other humanitarian groups on ensuring that we protect people who are fleeing persecution. Let me provide one more update. President Biden remains committed to doing everything within his power to protect the right to practice one's faith without fear. As the president has said, we must be vigilant against the rising tide of targeted violence and hate at home and abroad and work to ensure that no one feels afraid to attend a religious service, school, or community center. And that we walk, or whether they're just walking down the street wearing the symbols of their faith. We are heartbroken over the recent mass shootings, including those at houses of worship. In just the past couple of months, there have been shootings at churches in California, Iowa, and Alabama. And this winter, there was a harrowing hostage situation, as you know, at a synagogue in Texas. The administration is taking a range of steps to address these horrific acts. In fiscal year 2022, the administration implemented a major funding increase in the Department of Homeland Security's nonprofit security grant program, which makes funding available to threaten nonprofits, including houses of worship and other religiously affiliated entities to improve their safety and security. The president's budget for fiscal year 2023, um, in that budget, he has called for a doubling of funding for this key program. The administration also regularly provides trainings and other technical assistance for thousands of faith-based and community leaders on how they can protect their places of worship and other community institutions. Let me also note that the Protecting Places of Worship Interagency Policy Committee has been established to address increased threats and acts of violence against houses of worship. This group brings together staff from across the federal government to protect the safety and security of houses of worship. And I'm pleased to co-chair this IPC, as we call it. Later this summer, we'll report on some of the, uh, the IPC's initial work. And President Biden signed, as you probably know, a, recently a bipartisan bill, the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, which enhances certain restrictions and um, penalties on firearms purchases, promotes evidence-based best practices for school safety, authorize grants to expand access to mental health services, and appropriates emergency funding for mental health services and for safety uh, measures at school. Let me close with a hopeful story that came out of one of these awful attacks, a story President Biden shared earlier this year. In January 2022, a man went to Congregation Beth Israel in Colleyville, Texas, and took four worshipers hostage, including the rabbi, Charlie Citron Walker, and held them at gunpoint for more than 10 hours. Thankfully, due to the heroic actions by law enforcement and by the hostages themselves, the hostages were able to escape this harrowing situation. This was an act of terror targeting the Jewish community. And as President Biden has said, the administration simply will not tolerate such attacks on synagogues and other houses of worship, and we will stand against this rising tide of violence with you, including against every form of anti-Semitism, anti-Muslim sentiment, anti-Christian sentiment, any sentiment uh, that is directed uh, in, in a motivation of hate toward religious communities. Our resources for fighting such scourges, however, don't just come from the government and elected officials. 
Consider the response of the hostages and the community to this incident. Rabbi Charlie and the other hostages demonstrated incredible composure and bravery on that day. Throughout their ordeal, they never gave up hope, and neither did their friends and neighbors. Indeed, shortly after the congregation's members were taken hostage, their friends and neighbors flew into action. As it turned out, Rabbi Charlie and his wife Adini, Adina excuse me, have long been deeply invested in dialogue and cooperation across communities of different faiths, beliefs, and backgrounds. And that includes engagement with a wide network of their fellow Texans. This network included a Dallas Imam, Omar Suleiman, who immediately, when he heard about this situation, volunteered his services. Could he help translate? Could he help calm people down? What could he do? He started driving toward Colleyville. Another Baptist friend, Pastor Bob Roberts, I know a friend of many of ours, contacted the folks he knew. He knew uh, Imam Suleiman. He also knew the local police and contacted them to say that Imam Suleiman was on his way and that they should make contact with him. Good Shepherd Catholic Church was nearby to the synagogue. They offered their facilities as a safe place for the hostages' families and for the religious and community members to gather. They, uh, at Good Shepherd Church, this group was gathered and they took care of the, cat the families that day. They made sure that they were taken care of in every way and they even got, you know, bringing food from the neighborhood to uh, help people, nourish people during the day. And around sunset on that day, three Muslim women, friends of Rabbi Charlie's wife, Adina, arrived at Good Shepherd Church with one of Rabbi Charlie's favorite foods, their home-cooked samosas. And when Adina saw her friends walk through the doors, they fell into each other's arms weeping. We must rise up together, just as these remarkable Texans did on that harrowing day in January this year. Let me close by thanking you for your commitment to the belief that every life is of equal value and infinite worth. Thank you for your commitment to the proposition that we can and we must work together even more closely in the days ahead to protect one another, to learn from one another, to make our neighborhoods, our countries, and our world a better place. President Biden and his administration recommit to working shoulder to shoulder with you to advance these shared aims. Thank you and Godspeed.